Welcome back to Baking with Our Beepo. Now, during the commercial break, we just finished pouring our fudge dice mixture into the baking pan to cool. Now, for those of you who prefer a bit less player agency in your games, or if you're making these treats for either a four-year-old child or a 40-year-old man-child who still hasn't grasped the concept that there's consequences to his actions when you're playing a game system that involves rolling dice, Feel free to sprinkle on a few more math rocks with whatever number you prefer facing up. What? I'm kind of in the middle of a show here. Sponsor? <laughs> okay, hold on. Chitty's calling me on the other line. Let's try a little nibble, shall we? Mmm, unbelievable. Such a rich, dramatic flavor that you can only get by gaslighting. And these things are so easy to make to keep your story on track. No unexpected crits or <coughs> convenient natural onesies. <laughs> Baking with R.B. Bo is sponsored by D20 Cruise. D20 Cruise is hosting their annual five-day cruise on the Royal Caribbean's Mariner of the Seas. Sure, it's got all those cruisy things like buffets, pools, jacuzzis, movie theater, mini golf, ice rink, arcades, escape rooms, rock walls, live music, laser tag, wave boarding spas, art galleries, dance classes. <gasps> but D20 Cruise knows what you really want. Tabletop game sessions with hand-picked game masters to fit your play style. Look at them all. They even got a tiefling to run games for you warlock door. Mini painting workshops, giveaways, dungeon master and player workshops by those folks over at, oh, what's their names? Uh, World Anvil? D20 2024 is sailing away on April 27th from Orlando, Florida to, uh... Puerto Costa Maya, Mexico. And, uh... Cozumel, Mexico. And you're gonna bring them back, right? And they'll even take you back to Orlando by May 2nd. Links for tickets are in the description below. Tickets are on sale until the end of February. Can't go this year? Well, there's next year for five days, sailing away April 14th, 2025. Thanks to D20 Cruise for sponsoring this video. The problem I have with dice fudging is that everyone's debating on whether if it's a good or a bad tool for DMs, but no one's really talking about all the things DMs can do to prevent from even having to make that choice in the first place. Now, it's probably no surprise that I'm against fudging as a principle. And I prefer to steer DMs away from using fudging as a quick fix because it can turn into a long-term resentment by your players when they discover you're feeding them fudge. Not if, when. Your players are smarter than you assume. And we're habitual creatures, we DMs. You have tells, I have patterns. Wow, the monsters always seem to go down in about three hits. Huh, whenever I'm one hit away from going down, the monsters always seem to barely miss. Convenient. Now, I know why you do this. You want things to be dramatic. You don't want a random goblin encounter to unalive one of your player characters here in the first few sessions. That's not dramatically satisfying. They should only die to important things like boss fights. You can't have someone die by a bunch of unnamed orcs within the first third of a campaign. <laughs> what a lame way to go. But the problem I have with this argument is that if you're of the mindset that characters can't die or receive lingering injuries or otherwise fail a random or minor encounter, why are we wasting time playing out this fight when we know one side will definitely not lose? Well, it's to whittle down some of their resources, you say. And to that, I say, well then, why not whenever you have an encounter that's not gonna be dramatic enough for the players to possibly fail, then just resolve this in a single dice roll and call it a day. Hey everyone, roll a d20 and add up your attack modifiers. If you pass a dc 15, you kill the goblins and we move on. If you fail the dc, you kill the goblins but took 2d6 points of damage and we move on. But wait, that's not emotionally satisfying either. I 
I think we DMs need to start realizing that some of the negative emotions that can come up within a low stakes environment like a Dungeons and Dragons game is not something that we should be avoiding. I'm not going to go out of my way to make my players fail or to get upset, but you can fail in a board game or a video game and even in a tabletop role playing game and still say you had a good time. When you fetch dice rolls or otherwise save a player from something negative within the game's fiction, you might think you're protecting them from something that feels unfun or even unfair in the moment, but you're hurting them somewhere deeper. Do you want to know something that every player inherently wants but will never outright tell you? They want to see the consequences of their actions. Positive consequences and the negative... And negative consequences. Sure, they don't like the negative as much as the positive, but they will leave your game satisfied because you and the game world treated them believably. I didn't say realistically, because someone in the comments is going to say, well, why do we have to be realistic in a game about magic and dragons? And I don't play these games for realism. I play to believe that I'm a character in this world of yours. And the DM reaching down with their almighty hand to pluck me out of feels bad man feelings is a sure way to wake me up out of this matrix. Back when I was a kid, I used to spend my free time taking my battered plastic lightsaber outside to slay thousands of imaginary battle droids while leading my invisible clone army across my backyard. And every skirmish I led was a landslide. But now, I'm an adult. I want my imaginary play to have stakes, dang it. I like pulling up console commands and turning on God mode as much as the next guy, but there's a reason why God mode is only fun for about 15 minutes. So if you want to keep from fudging and potentially ruining the magic of the game, both players and DMs should learn to embrace the failures. You won't love it at the moment, but the highs only feel high when you've been through some of the lows. While I may like my D&D games to feel dramatic and emotionally satisfying, I would rather have my big bad die in the first round or let the goblin crit the wizard than to allow myself to perform the most egregious sin I believe DMs can make. And that's to remove the player's autonomy, agency, or influence within the fiction of my game world. Despite my affinity for the term dungeon master or game master, the name of referee is a more appropriate term to me. Because nobody's watching the referee in like baseball or football or any sports ball. They're just on the sidelines in their black and white stripes tailing the players. They're practically invisible. The athletes are doing their thing, staying within the rules of the game, and then an uncertainty. The whistle blows, the game stops. And where do all eyes fall on? Hey, 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 hey. That's how I run my games. If you want to prevent yourself from having to choose to fudge in the first place, try seeing yourself as a referee first. And tell your players this too. When I'm running any sort of session zero, I remind my group that I roll everything openly and I play it as it lies. I'll explain why I'm rolling this dice, what it means if you succeed, and what it could mean if you fail. I'm an open book, and you have the right to get in my face and respectively challenge my judgment call. But I also have the right to kick you out of the game if you're being unreasonably disruptive. But deficient, you may ask. What about those times when you accidentally make an encounter that was way too tough on the players? How are you gonna fix it? Well, firstly, I don't balance my encounters at all. But we'll save that for another video. But I don't have to fudge the dice because I let the players fudge the dice. What? It's baked into 5e. They call it inspiration. If you're worried about tailoring dice results so it doesn't bum out the players, why not just give the players a mechanic to prevent that poorly timed natural one? Give each player a token at the start of the game that they can apply to any d20 roll that gives it either a ridiculous bonus or an instant success or whatever result the player wants to have. You only get one a session? And consider it like your heroic luck or something. Because I understand. I, I really do. 
If something bad happens to my character because of a dice roll I couldn't control, sure, that might not feel so good. But remember, not feeling good all the time is a good thing. If something bad happens to my character because of a dice roll I couldn't control, but the DM changed it to save me, well, that never feels good. But if something bad happens because of a dice roll I couldn't control, but I did have a way to alter it, but I already spent it this session on convincing that shopkeeper to sell me a sword for a couple bucks cheaper, well, then I got nothing to blame but my own choices. End of day, your fun is valid, you play however you want. But the longer I play these games, the more I've come to realize that surrendering my authority to the will of both the player's spoken and unspoken needs, and the will of the dice, has made running the game both easier and more dramatic. And maybe this advice will help you as much as it had helped me. And if you want to see more about how I prefer to DM, check out this video over here. Thanks again to D20 Cruise for being my first sponsor. Check them out below. That's all I got for now. See ya!